Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Huawei Connect 2020 Service Forum. Huawei Enterprise Services started in 2011. Over the past nine years, we have kept investing in basic assurance, cloud enablement, ONM for verticals, and other service capabilities. As new technologies such as cloud computing, big data, 5G, and AI advance, we believe that smart service will become a new driving force for digital transformation in verticals. Going digital has become the national strategy of major economies in the world. More and more nations have realized that digital capabilities are not just about lower costs and greater efficiency for enterprises. They are the major driving force of innovation and breakthroughs in business models. Here is statistics from UN on two major indicators, ICT Development Index and Country Index. It shows that over the past 15 years, in US, EU, and China, the digital development momentum represented, represented by IDI has always been higher than momentum of the overall national development, which means that digitalization has become the main driver of national development and has a profound impact on internal and external environment of a country. By 2020, at least 55% of organizations around the world had started digitalization, with OTT, communication, media, and finance taking the lead, followed by retail, manufacturing, government, and so on. Vertical industries are reshaping their business through digitalization and new business models, which altered the competition landscape, our lifestyle, and production patterns. As evidenced by e-commerce platform, which changes our shopping behavior, intelligent bank risk control, which has reduced the payment risks, and online one-stop government service, which has improved the residents' experience. Huawei is also getting more efficient and innovative by going digital. Our experience of exploration and practices has been applied to serve our customers for shared success. Over the past year, Huawei Enterprise service Services has worked with partners to serve customers with digital and innovative applications, advanced intelligent transformation with platform plus ecosystem strategy. On the way moving to digitalization, we never stop. Since the launch of Enterprise Service Architecture 2.0 in 2019, Huawei has invested over 200 million US dollars to develop intelligent service platform and leading solutions using cloud computing, AI, and big data to incentivize partners, expand the service ecosystem, and equip professionals with new skills required by new technology and industry trend, so as to provide up-to-date technical experience to customers. Besides, we also invest more in security, trustworthiness, and BCM to ensure there is no service interruption for whatever reason. We have used the AI in our service uh, three service platforms. Seventy of customer problems can be addressed by smart self-service. The tool platform has been successfully supporting more than 100,000 projects. It now serves 40,000 users in total, covers more than 70% of partners, and automates 60% of the planning and design work. The online talent platform has its entire process of learning, certification, and employment cloud-based. Up to now, 650,000 registered users have accumulated 450,000 learning hours. In 2019, Huawei GSC one-stop service platform won the outstanding certification from TSIA, which is the world's largest technical service industry association. Huawei works with partners to build an open cooperative and win-win service ecosystem. Partners' revenue accounts for 86% of Huawei's total revenue. Currently, Huawei has 4,800 global service partners, of which more than 500 are four- or five-star partners. We have more than 100 CSSPs for industry digital transformation, including major players such as Digital China, Chinasoft, and Accenture. Together, we have developed 100-plus scenario-based solutions. To have innovative industry solutions quickly meet customer requirements, Huawei established a certain joint verification centers globally, dealing with video, AI, big data, cloud, network, converged communications, IoT, trustworthiness, security, etc. Innovative solutions will be strictly tested and adapted to guarantee a successful launch.
Together with more than 300 partners and customers, we have started 32 innovation topics, incubated 50 innovative industry applications, and verified 95 projects in a year. Up to now, we have incubated a lot of scenario-based applications, such as radar and video integrated runway incursion detection, which monitors airport runways and issue alerts um, without um, man human interference and intelligent inspection of uh, power grades, which replaces human beings to work at height, monitoring of illegal discharge of sewage and quick handling. Currently, 253 Fortune 500 companies, 58 of which are Fortune 100 companies, selected Huawei as their strategic digital transformation partner. To address external uncertainties, such as the epidemic, Huawei adheres to customer centricity, establishes security compliance and business continuity assurance the system and processes to continuously provide high-quality services for customers. On security compliance, we have strengthened the systematic construction of process, IT audit, and governance. Over the past year, more than 2,000 engineers obtained security work license. That means all engineers except for new employees still under training have been certified. All operations are authorized before access, and no user privacy or network service data breach ever occurred. On business continuity, Huawei has established the Incident Continuity Plan, ICP, Business Continuity Plan, BCP, and Key Supply Assurance Plans. Currently, we have stored for over 200,000 strategic spare parts. In addition, Huawei collaborated with five supply hubs in Europe, India, Mexico, Brazil, and Dubai, and with over 500 local spare part warehouses to meet SLA commitments. Up to now, customer-facing delivery and maintenance have been uh, done with high quality. For example, the on-time service rate of spare part delivery reaches 98.3% by now, higher than the same period last year. In a digital wave, you will go backward if you do not move forward. In the coming year, we will step up our strategic investment in services, build capabilities around digital transformation in verticals and helps accelerate it. Digital transformation is essentially business transformation and is a long-term systematic project. Based on our own experience and that of verticals, we believe that to design the top-level architecture, we needed to have a global picture or a blueprint in mind. When it comes to actual implementation, it's better to start small, choosing a piece that can achieve growth through digital transformation. This reduces complexity boosts the confidence and facilitates the transformation process, thus allowing quick expansion and bringing gains along each step. Digital transformation must also consider investment. It's better to restructure existing networks, systems, and services rather than disrupt everything and start afresh. Capabilities accumulated during the transformation can be inherited by platforms. In these ways, enterprises will get better at the transformation, can transform more services, and be able to evolve by themselves. Based on its digital transformation practices, Huawei focuses on building core capabilities in consulting and planning, cloud enablement, intelligent ONM, smart operation, etc., to be an engine of industry digitalization and preferred partner in customer digital transformation journeys. Our consulting and planning service is the creatalization of Huawei's 20-year digital practices in R&D, manufacturing, sales, supply, service, and other process and scenarios. We have systematic knowledge library and methodologies. Customers may consult us on digital strategy, transformation, ICT infrastructure, top-level digital architecture design, and blueprint outlining. They can count on us to build basic cloud foundation and unified enablement platform so as to realize ultimate user experience of being real-time, on-demand, or online, DIY, and social. We also help with step-by-step -step implementation to transform leadership, overall user experience, information, and achieve digital operation. Huawei has more than 3,000 digital transformation experts to help customers avoid detours and pitfalls and head straight to business success. Up to now, more than 300 customers in vertical markets have chosen Huawei's digital transformation consulting service. Enterprises digital transformation evolves from being network-based to cloud-based to being digital and intelligent. Different verticals may be at different stages. Finance and OTT industries have been cloud-based. They are going digital and exploring and experimenting with intelligence. Others, such as construction and steel industry, are still exploring cloud. 
Huawei Cloud Enablement Service helps with cloud construction, cloud-based deployment, big data, and AI enablement. There have been successful practices. For instance, the cloud police cloud and big data solution supports service migration to cloud, big data engineering, AI enabling, and data sharing across district, city, and province. With it, the criminal and public order events dropped by 13%. In the past, with MTC in highways, it took at least 15 seconds for each vehicle to pass through. Now the high-speed free flow solution automatically recognizes license plates and charges tools. The passing time is reduced to seconds. In city transportation, Huawei Traffic Go solution can intelligently control traffic lights based on the traffic flow. The traffic congestion has been reduced by 15% on average. As digital transformation advances in all dimensions, number of as devices increases, the system, service, and data have become more and more complex. Ensuring service operations, continuity, efficiency, security, and stability is a major challenge. Based on Huawei Shenlong Unified O&M platform, our intelligent O&M solution can visualize management of all objects, compress and filter massive alarms, and quickly locate faults. We also offer O&M consulting, design, and on-site O&M support by experts. Through platform plus experts and AI, Huawei helps customers identify potential network risks and realize proactive O&M for higher security and greater efficiency. O&M efficiency can be increased, can increase by 30%, and system availability by 20%. Up to now, Huawei O&M service solutions have been widely used in smart transportation, smart city, smart energy, and other scenarios. At the height of uh, digital transformation, the gap between enterprises is widening in a new dimension, namely digital operation. Currently, Huawei service focuses on scenario-based operation support. We aim to be customers' operation support partner by building a digital operation system involving assets, platforms, applications, and business scenarios to fully unleash their potentials. In the future, we'll evolve to a smart operation, which values customer success and agile response. Together with customers, we will form smart operation strategies and leadership. We believe that data and information are going to be the key intelligent assets in assisting customer decision-making and actions, and in insights gaining, association analysis, trend prediction, response strategies, and cognitive learning. These capabilities will help customers respond agilely from vision to delivery to operation and help them innovate business models, reshape business forms to be more competitive. Digital comp operation has to be based on platform and visualize the operation management brings greater efficiency. Later, we are going to launch Huawei Digital Operations Support Service Solution. Please stay with us. Building a service ecosystem is a basic strategy of Huawei Enterprise Services. Compared to 2019, the number of Huawei partners has grown to 4,800 from 3,800, up by 30%. Our cooperation has expanded beyond traditional integration and basic assurance services to service applications in vertical industries such as intelligent outputs, intelligent grades, and intelligent finance. Our goal is to create a sound service environment that sustains a healthy ecosystem and supports its quick expansion. To this end, we have adopted a partner incentive plan including sales and capability building incentives and provided 200 plus courses to help with partner expertise building. Besides, partners have full access to our professional tool platforms like iMOC and IOCC through APIs. This will help them provide high quality and consistent customer services and get a higher satisfaction rate. By 2025, we expect to have more than 10,000 ecosystem partners. Intelligence enables innovation, service connects to the future. We will still face lots of challenges in digital transformation. Huawei is ready to explore with customers and partners to embrace the digital era. Thank you. My name is Thomas Law, and I am the Executive Director for the Technology and Services Industry Association. And for those of you that don't know us, we are a research institute. We do deep operational benchmarking with technology companies to help them optimize their business models. And today, I want to talk about the service trends that are impacting technology business models. And there's three things that I want to cover. I want to start with the TSIA C to A framework. And then I want to talk about the trends that are impacting 
technology business models and, and have us think about what will those models look like two, three years from now. And then I'm going to end with your C to A posture. So let's start with this TSIA C to A framework. Over the last three, three and a half months, I have met with 76 leadership teams from technology companies to talk about how the current environment is impacting their business models. And I can tell you that for, for tech in general, companies pivoted very quickly when this crisis occurred and adjusted to the reality of having at-home workforces and supporting their customers remotely. So, so tech did very well there. Now it is all about the move forward. And every company I, I talk to, they are on one of three paths. The first path is crisis to failure. Th there are some technology companies that are not going to make it through this global downturn. They do not have the financial wherewithal. There will be consolidation in the industry. The second path, which is perhaps the, the most common, unfortunately, is crisis to crisis. And this is where we have companies that had business models before the downturn that, that, that had some issues. They were starting to creak and groan. Then we have this global downturn. These companies have the financial wherewithal to make it through, but they're not fixing anything. They're not changing anything. And so as the global economy starts to come back, these companies are still going to have the same challenges. The path that is most compelling is crisis to advantage. And these are companies that, that right now, they're thinking about what will the new normal look like as the global economy comes back? What will business, successful business models look like? And do I have the capabilities to succeed? And so right now, they're focused on building those capabilities. And I would submit to you that market share is being won and lost right now. Not 12 months from now, not 36 months from now, but the initiatives that you are pursuing right now, the investments you are making right now, are what's going to set you up for success as the economy comes back. So you need to understand the longer term trends that are unfolding in the technology industry. And so let me put some of the, those key trends on the table here. And we're going to start with more revenue going to as a service. What does that mean? So instead of customers buying technology as an asset, that they install into their data centers, they're consuming technology as a service, like a SaaS service, a cloud service. And to give you some data on that, we track 50 of the largest technology companies on the planet. We've been doing this, as you can see, for many years. And this is how they make their money. And in the orange line are these technology companies selling technology as an asset, right, where the customer buys it, installs it in their data center. And as you can see, those revenues peaked all the way back in 2008. And if you move forward to Q2 of 2020, this most recent quarter, you can see a sharp decline in that orange line. Because when there's a global downturn, transactional revenues freeze up, right? Customers don't buy new products right away. Now, the blue line represents the service revenues for these companies. And this isn't just support services, implementation services. We're talking about SaaS. We're talking about cloud. We are talking about managed services. And those revenue streams continue to grow. And you can also see in Q2 2020, there was not a sharp decline. Those revenues are more resilient in a downturn. And I'll give you an industry example of, of moving from selling as a product to selling as a service. In the area of med tech, there's a product around helping customers breathe well at night. And these products have been out there for a long time. A lot of different companies make them. And along comes this company called ResMed that starts to sell this technology as a service, as a subscription. And the technology is connected to the cloud so healthcare providers can see how their patients are, are doing with the technology. And it's doing very well. And as you can see, investors are rewarding on the left-hand side. That's the valuation of ResMed. And so it's a great example of, of an area in technology that used to be sold as a product, now sold as a subscription and doing very well. That's happening again and again and again in technology markets. So that's one key trend to be aware of. Another trend that's being amplified, accelerated, is digital transformation. 
And this was something that was starting you know, before we had this crisis. But now a lot of companies realized that their infrastructure was not set up to support remote workers. It wasn't set up to help work with their customers remotely. And so they realized they had to refresh their infrastructure. And so that if they have the financial wherewithal, they are accelerating their investments in digital transformation. Now, I know that that's a bit of a, a buzzword, um, but from the TSIA perspective, we, we have a very specific definition here. When we talk about digital transformation, this is where customers are pursuing two different value vectors. First of all, customers are tearing down their data centers and they're putting more of the workloads up in the cloud. And secondly, as they're doing that, customers are re-engineering their processes. And so here's the visual view of this. Moving from left to right, customers are taking workloads from their data centers, putting them out into the cloud. And then as they do that, they are re-engineering their processes, both their customer-facing processes and their employee processes. And as they do that, that is unlocking analytics. That is, that as you get your workloads into the cloud, you get better telemetry on how the processes are working and can use tools like AI, RPA to optimize those processes. So that's digital transformation. L let me jump down to this trend number five, customers preferring remote services. So in the current crisis, obviously we couldn't easily go out to the customer site and deliver services. And so we had to deliver those services, more of them remotely. But what's happened is that as technology providers, we're realizing we can do this pretty efficiently and effectively, and customers are also seeing the benefits here. So for those reasons, we're seeing a whole new wave of investment in being able to deliver remote services. And we just brought together about 25 technology companies two months ago to talk about their efforts in this area. And we asked them, so when this crisis is over, and when everybody can travel again, are you going to send everybody back on planes to deliver services on site? And the, and the answer there is no. We are going to deliver more of our services remotely. And there's also, again, this whole new wave of investment. 64% of these companies are working on automating service delivery. When it comes to using analytics around your services so you can be more prescriptive and predictive, 88% of these companies are investing in that. And when it comes to artificial intelligence, 56% of the companies investing in this. So again, a whole new wave of investment to be able to deliver services remotely. And as we brought these companies together to talk about this topic, really tech companies have two different work streams going here. On the left-hand side, they are focusing on the technologies and the practices to deliver services they used to have to go on site to deliver to do that remotely. That could be an implementation service, an education service. And on the right-hand side, they are investing in technologies to drive automation. Right? How do they look at their best practices and automate those practices? So again, the current environment is really accelerating, amplifying the trend to remote services. The, the next trend I want to jump to is number six, this amplification of customer success. And again, this is something that was happening um, before the current crisis, but it has been accelerated and amplified because of the current environment. And so when I say customer success, what is that? So 69% of the technology companies that we benchmark now have a distinct customer success organization in place. And what that includes is, is not just your traditional service capabilities like support, professional services, education, but also a customer success capability. And these are customer success managers that are working with customers to understand how the customer defines success and how your technology solutions can help the customer succeed. So it's a new capability. And it, it basically creates a new way that the technology providers work with their customers. We call this life cycle the PMO life cycle. What does that mean? It starts with planning, sitting down with your customers and understanding what are their business objectives. Then you implement your technology solutions and you're not done. You don't wait for the customer to call and tell you when something is broken because you are monitoring how the customer is using the technology, you're understanding where they're adopting, where they're not adopting, and then you're adjusting. You're helping them optimize the usage of your technology so they achieve their business outcomes. 
and then you circle back around and you start that whole life cycle again. And by having this big C customer success capability, it allows technology providers to climb this value ladder. So instead of just providing the technology and saying, hey, we've got great technology, you can actually start to work with customers around their business KPIs. What, what is your customer trying to improve and how does your technology platform help them with that? And finally, you can get to the place where you're helping customers achieve their business income outcomes, whether that's increasing revenues, you know, decreasing costs, whatever those critical business outcomes are. So this is the journey that technology providers are on now, climbing the value ladder. So let's go back to this framework of, of C to A. So again, unfortunately, a majority of companies that I talk to are on this crisis to crisis path. It's not compelling. You want to get on this crisis to advantage path. And so to do that, what I see really sharp leadership teams doing is right now, they are either replanning, they're setting new initiatives, new investments to, to make sure they are going to be successful in the, the new business environment, or I've talked to leadership teams that are already done with that replanning and they are aggressively retooling, focusing on building new capabilities to be successful as the economy comes back. And to get through this life cycle successfully, you really need to be thinking about the industry scenarios. What are the key trends that are really being amplified and accelerated by the current crisis that we have to understand and be, and, and be prepared for so that when, again, the economy comes back, we are positioned to capture market share. So let me close with sort of what this means to you. So I, I believe in the audience here, we have both technology service providers and consumers of technology services. And so let's start with the technology service provider. So if that's what you do, what do these trends mean to you, starting with more revenue going to as a service? If you're a technology service provider, you should be aggressively standing up as a service offers. Whether it's SaaS, whether it is new managed offers, your customers, more and more of your customers are gonna to want to consume your technology as a service, as a subscription, and you need to be prepared for that. In terms of accelerating digital transformation, you should be creating offers that help your customers pursue those two value vectors. Offers that help your customers move to the cloud and then even more importantly, offers that help your customers optimize their business processes. When it comes to extreme remote services, as a technology service provider, you need to be prepared for that reality. A lot of your competitors are gonna become very, very good at delivering services remotely, and there's gonna be real advantage to that. And if you can't do that, if your model is just throwing everybody back on a plane and going back on the site, that is gonna be a competitive disadvantage as the economy comes back. And last but not least, the importance of customer success. You need to be investing and in scaling customer success. You need to have that capability so you can work more intimately with your customers to help them achieve their business outcomes. Now, what if you're a consumer of technology services? What do these trends mean to you? If you're still buying all of your technology, putting it into your data center, running it yourself, you should be exploring consuming technology as a service because, again, we look at all the data, the trends, that's where it's going. There's real advantages to consuming technology that way. Industry after industry is moving that way, and so if you are not exploring that, you need to be looking at that. When it comes to digital transformation, if you're not making any investments there, you need to be. Because again, if your competitors are investing in digital transformation right now, they are gonna have much more efficient, effective business processes. Again, as the economy comes back, you are gonna be at a disadvantage competing against them. When it comes to extreme remote services, if, if your uh, posture right now is to say, look, we want all of our services to be delivered on site. We wanna see who's working on our technology. That, that's really important to us. I encourage you to rethink that. Not all services can be done remotely, but many, many services can, and it's gonna be more cost efficient. It's gonna be easier to schedule. You're gonna have access to better technical talent to deliver those services. So you should be considering where that makes sense for you. And last but not least, for you as a technology consumer, when it comes to the importance of customer success, you should be demanding 
from your technology providers that they can sit down with you and help you achieve your business objectives. You should be demanding that customer success capability from your technology providers. So I hope this, this overview of some of the key trends was helpful. It's a great honor to be here and be part of, of uh, this conference, and I wish everybody very well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lin Qingkang from Shenzhen Airport. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to share with you our experience in operation management. Let me start by briefly introducing Shenzhen Airport. Shenzhen Airport was officially launched in October 1991. Its business has been growing rapidly. In 2019, the number of passengers it served exceeded 15 million, ranked number five in China. The volume the volume of air cargo and mail shipments reached 1.28 million tons, ranked number four in China. International passengers amounted to 5 million last year, marking the fastest growth rate in China. Shenzhen Airport takes the lead in combined digital transformation with smart airport construction and coordinates planning, construction, and operation. Currently, we have set up one network for security, one map for comprehensive operation control, and one-stop service provisioning. The security network integrates more than 20 surveillance subsystems, including access control and alarm subsystems, and is equipped with AI and video analysis, making the whole situation visible and aware. The operation control map shows that we have improved the passenger flow, cargo flow, and traffic flow by building an intelligent operation center. We have area, ground, and terminal views based on scenarios, meeting the requirements of centralized command, hierarchical management, overall coordination, and efficient collaboration. When building the comprehensive operation control system, we launched the first intelligent aircraft slot allocation system in the industry, which increased the rate of jet bridge-based boarding by 5%. That means each year another 2 million passengers can board through jet bridges instead of ferries, marking a better passenger experience. One-stop service combines online mini-programs with offline facial recognition. Eight self-service self application scenarios are available offline for passenger self-service throughout the whole process. 35 services are available online covering departure, arrival, and pickup scenarios. We have improved the security check efficiency by 50% through our fast-track channels. With precise locating the terminal, we offer indoor navigation for each passenger. The 2019 Smart Airport Construction Conference of Central and Southern China has, was held at Shenzhen Airport, attended by airports that serve tens of millions of passengers annually in China. By far, our Smart Airport Exhibition Hall has received visits from more than 50 institutes and companies. Shenzhen Airport always puts planning first. Led by executive management at the group, Shenzhen Airport assigned a large number of key business employees to set up a joint team with Huawei for our digital transformation planning. The plan covers all airport business with full service modules, namely one network, one map, one stop, and one screen. It also includes the ICT infrastructure that allows cloud network synergy. We have built a digital platform that connects everything and a technology ecosystem that supports continuous innovation. This is our overall blueprint. The overall architecture consists of four layers and four modules. The four layers present a technical view. They are device layer, infrastructure layer, platform layer, and application layer. The four modules offer a business view. They are one security network, one operation control map, one stop service, and one management screen. We unify the technical framework and application platform. With this overall technical architecture, there is no more traditional silo-style construction. 
Based on the overall technical architecture, Shenzhen Output and Huawei built a OnePlus 5 digital platform based on the cloud platform. One refers to one integration platform, and five refers to five general platforms for big data, video service, converged communications, geographic information service, and IoT. These five platforms provide unified services for four business applications. Security, operation control, service, and management. A lot of our smart output construction work has come to fruition. How to secure, ensure secure, stable, and efficient system operation with limited resources is our current concern, and is also the direction we have been working on. We face four major challenges. First, not enough employees and inadequate personal skills. The system is expanding and the construction of satellite ports and the smart airport project must be supported. We are in shortage of people. When it comes to cloud computing and big data, the skills of our employees are not adequate. Second, no automated and modernized operation tools. A smart airport requires high service integration. Traditional siloed network management can no longer meet the requirements of fault locating and operation management. The management objects are extremely complex in the airport. We need a modern operation tool for unified management. Third, our organization and process management need to be adjusted. The airport is operating in greater efficiency and business scale is constantly expanding, which raise higher requirements on information service performance and new systems. Accordingly, new and higher requirements are imposed on organizational processes and service. Last but not least, risks of applying new technologies. Many new technologies have been introduced to the smart output project. Some have been used for the first time in China and even internationally. Those new technologies do facilitate business and improve service. However, they have risks in maintainability and stability. Next, I'd like to explain how Shenzhen Airport is working to address these challenges. First, we define the ONM concept of our smart airport, that is, preventative maintenance and continuous improvement. Why put the idea first? We learned it from our experience. In the past, the management level set KPIs against the number of faults handled. More faults means that more work has been done. Now we need to change the mindset. It should be that the fewer the faults, the greater workers' performance. That is in line with the idea of preventative maintenance. Nowadays, more and more devices are available, and a device fault is inevitable. In philosophy, it is said that a man cannot step into the same river twice. In ONM's case, it should be that we cannot fall into the same pit twice. Therefore, we need continuous improvement to avoid major faults and reduce the number of minor faults. To achieve this goal, we have developed four measures: standardizing ONM process, automating ONM operations, carrying out regular assurance work, and standardizing ONM procedure. This is the evolution path of our ONM. We are evolving from efficient ONM to smart ONM. There are five phases. We have completed manual management and the tool assisted automatic management phase and are working on the task based automatic management phase. Next, we plan to achieve scenario based automatic closed loop management. Single scenario autonomy and all scenario closed loop support. Our ONM organization consists of a airport team, Huawei team, front end outsourcing team, and manufacturer technical support team. These teams are coordinated efficiently by our airport team. As to ONM tools, we have introduced in Huawei's iMOC ONM platform for comprehensive, visualized, and automatic ONM. We have been continuously improving the rules and specifications and introduced in the best practices of ITO. Here is a, uh, our detailed ONM organization structure. Our port ONM team consists of internal team and outsourcing team.
So far, the number of outsourced workers has exceeded that of our employees. We have shifted from fear of outsourcing to embracing outsourcing. In the past, we were afraid that the HR department might ask, "What will you do if the work is outsourced?" Now we can tell them that our team will gradually shift to be a team of experts and managers. Outsourcing does not lower requirements on our airport team. On the contrary, it raises higher requirements on our employees. That's why now we do not hesitate to outsource our work. The management team of the operation management department accounts for two thirds of the total employees in the IT team. While taking charge of system OM, we also need to fully participate in the construction of a smart airport. In 2019, we participated in the construction and implementation of 32 Huawei supported future airport subsystem projects in phase one and worked. With our construction team to make more than 1,000 changes. During these changes, we did not encounter any major failure that affects the production. On process management, we introduced the best practices of ITO and implemented its four core processes, namely service requests, incident issue, and change management. To achieve preventative maintenance, we proactively identify risks, plan maintenance, inspect routinely, optimize and upgrade and maintain in emergencies. We focus on pre-event handling rather than post-event troubleshooting. At the bottom of the slide are two charts. The left-hand side one is about event data, and the right-hand side is the change data. Data in two tables are highly correlated. As the number of general events increases, so do the number of changes. In other words, we have contained the fault increase through proactive maintenance. As to rules and regulations, we have established regulations and rules at group level, manufacturing management center level, and operation management department level. These standardized our operations. In particular, we have very solid regulations at the operation level. Those regulations and rules are feasible and instructive. We built a unified application platform to monitor multiple systems and massive devices in a centralized manner. It helps monitor power and environment in equipment rooms, network, cloud resources, big data, video, digital platforms, and service applications. From monitoring to management, control, operation, and service, we have unified alarm monitoring, unified resource allocation process, unified work order process, unified service interface, and unified O&M analysis. Here is the overview of the O&M in Shenzhen Airport. Left-hand side is the running status of the equipment and facilities. Right-hand side is the status of our services. It is service-oriented and energy-end monitoring with all applications visualized. Based on that, we can have root course, course analysis to support quick fault locating. This is our resource and operation view. The overall situation diagram shows that the real-time status of a cloud platform resources and big data platform. The data center view displays the real-time status of each equipment room, including equipment rooms in domain A, domain B, and domain C. The view of cabinets in an equipment room tells you load and space usage of each cabinet. Here is the comparison between automatic O&M and manual O&M. We look at alarm reporting, inspection, and fault locating. 
Compared to manual check of multiple NEs, global real-time automatic alarm monitoring helps reduce manual work by 87%. Compared to one-by-one -one manual inspection, automatically executed inspection scripts increase inspection efficiency by 89%. With automation, the time required for complex fault locating is reduced from 2 hours to 20 minutes or reduced by 73%. In general, ONM automation improves efficiency and lowers risks. Finally, let me introduce our Joint Innovation Lab. Our Joint Innovation Lab is jointly established by Shenzhen Airport and Huawei. We test and verify new technologies in the lab to reduce risks of applying them and ensuring that technologies are secure and um, reliable in actual production environment. In the past year or so, we have successfully tested and verified a lot of applications, including intelligent allocation of aircraft slots, intelligent traffic in airfields, and integrated lighting applications. Joint Innovation Lab is also an important part of the ecosystem. New products and technologies in the industry can be verified in this lab environment as well. And this lab environment indeed attracts a lot of partners. That's all from my sharing. Thank you.